Good evening, ladies and gents of YouTube. This is MyCray, and I'm coming at you with a video that I'm very passionate about. If you've been a subscriber to my channel, you know, or you should at least know, that I'm obsessed with rank 8s to the point where I collect rank 8 monsters. I don't care if they're good or bad. You know, I just I love rank 8s. So this video, I want to talk about my top 10 who, what, in my opinion, the top 10 best generic rank 8s. Um, the reason I was going to do the best, my opinion for the top 10 best rank 8s, but I wanted to do it with the cards I have, and a lot of the rank 8s that I would have put on the list, um, I don't have, and they're not generic, so I'm like, okay. So, like, for example, so I'll put them as honorable mentions, I guess, for other great rank eights is the DDD rank eight. Oh, he is freaking powerful. He would be in the top three easily. Um, he would be up there. Uh, I haven't looked too much into the Raid Raptor one because when I saw it, because it's impractical to summon by two level eight wing beasts, so I'm like, well, screw it. And I'm not much into using rank up spell cards, but anyways, I want to start getting to the video. Uh, starting with number 10, uh, Aegean, Aegean the Sea Castrum. Sorry if I butchered that name, but I don't play this one too often. Because, I, you know, like I said, he's number 10 on my list. I have obviously have better rank 8s than him that I use. But um, he's actually, he, I, I still think he's a really good card. Uh, his effect is, I mean, he's you know, rank 8 water machine monster, and his ability is, or he takes two, any two level 8 monsters, and then during either player's turn, you can banish a random face down monster from your opponent's extra deck. Well, I know, you can't hit pendulum monsters unless they come up some way you flip pendulum monsters upside down in your opponent's deck. Um, and when you banish, you banish it face up. So a lot of times if you're in a duel, I think he's good. When you're in a duel with someone and we're game one, uh, you play him. Uh, obviously in defense mode, I mean question mark, attack, 3,000 defense. Um, you don't know what they're going to be playing. And that's a good way to kind of get a, to know what they're, they're playing, I feel. Give you a little bit of knowledge. But the monster you banish with his effect, he, his attack becomes, becomes that attack. Um... Uh, and then once per turn, you can detach an XC material uh, to choose one of the banished fusion XC or synchro monsters, and you return it to the extra deck. And if I, you do destroy one of your opponent's monster of the same card type, which is mm, it's good. It's you know, uh, I guess it doesn't target the monster you're destroying, so the t non targeting is good, especially if you're going up against you know monsters that can't target I mean obviously he won't be good against the hell's it called uh, Cosmos and stuff like that but yeah, it's still a very good card um, it's also a common so it's really cheap for pe kids who can't really afford better rank eights it's a it's still a really decent and powerful one and um, it hurts your opponent Honestly, my only use for it is I probably want to be returning their crap to the extra deck. I'll probably keep it in defense mode and then protect the living shit out of it. Like, uh, what's it called? I helmet the shit and just keep dismantling the extra deck. Um, anyways, so let's go to number nine. It is Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon. Now, I would have put him a little bit higher on the list, but the reason why he's number nine is the fact he takes three level eights. But you can also summon him by using a Galaxy X Z Zero, a Galaxy Eyes X Y Z monster you control as X Z material, uh, except a copy of himself. Um, but I do notice uh, online they will not let you uh, overlay him on Dark Matter, which kind of sucks. But the reason why I think he's good is um, you put all Galaxy, all the other Galaxy monster, Eyes monsters with the exception of um, Neo Galaxy Eyes and, and um, I guess Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon but with the exception of them and Dark Matter you over they're generic you know any two 
eight mo level eight monsters, and you overlay them on top of him, overlay him on top of them after you get whatever use they had, and you can pop one of your post monsters. It's a four thousand beater, and then um, he has an effect that deals with um, equipped spell cards or equipped cards, but um, that's really irrelevant. That's you're never going to be using that effect. But he, he'll mainly, you know, detach one and pop one of your opponent's uh, face-up cards, which is awesome, especially if you go overlay him, uh, pop one of your opponent's monsters, and then go to Dark Matter, and then um, uh, double attack of Dark Matter, who's also 4,000 beater, so you got three cards off the field. So, awesome, right there. Uh, number eight, yes, is number 15, Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. Now he's the only gimmick puppet on this list because he's good, Like even though all three of them are generics, he's the only good one that can fit into any deck. He's a big 2500 uh, defender and uh, up to tw he gets a Volcasaurus effect twice per turn and uh, well only if you hit your opponent's XYZ monsters which in this day and age everyone's playing majority of people are playing XYZs especially with a rank 4 spam format uh, you can easily go him defense mode if they have 2 XYZs you can probably it's like he can he can kind of cowboy your opponent I guess um, uh, that there's not much more to say to him they're, they're obviously better cards than him but I would if they make a deck where you can spam rank 8s like you can rank 4s I would probably throw him in there like if you can spam four rank eights in one turn type thing, I'll probably throw him in there. But anyways, next up to our next card, uh, number seven is I'll say the Sylvan High Protector. Um, this one has actually been seen a lot more play recently. Um, I, especially in Infernoids, because everyone switches between him and another rank eight for Infernoids. Uh, the reason why I think he he's so good in Infernoids, you. Obviously, um, he is probably the on this list. He has the biggest defense. His uh, defense is thirty-two hundred. He's a generic rank eight. Um, he doesn't. He's not only good in solo ones, but he's awesome in, in infernoids. Um, uh, I was playing on. I used to play him in my mythic dragon rollers when I first got him, because he, he basically once per turn you declare a card name and excavate the top card of your deck. If it's the declared card name, you can add it to your hand. If the, there's a card you really need, just keep calling it. If not, it sends to the graveyard. Then you can detach one and, you know, uh, uh, sorry, target uh, one card on the field. Uh, the only problem, and you know, you send it to the top of your opponent's deck or bottom. The only problem is that it targets. So it's not good against the Dark Destroyers. It's not good, you know. It's not good against Cosmos. It's not good against Magic Specters. Um, you can't even hit Leo with this. <laughs> but um, other than that, it's a good thirty-two hundred beater uh, for you know Infernoids. You it gets and you know obviously so ends up excavating cards to your deck. So you know Infernoids play them in defense mode. Call a reasoning. You don't get a reasoning. Just throw it to the graveyard. Just wait till next turn. And yeah, I mean, you plus off of it. Anyways, number six is number 62, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. Um, I, I honestly, I love this card. He's a f generic rank 8, 4,000 beater. Uh, you can't... He, he brings himself back after he's destroyed with double the attack. But he's going to do half damage anyway because he doesn't have Galaxy Eyes, Photon Dragons, and Material. Um, but he also gets like an honest effect when he's battling. You can detach and you add up all the ranks on the field, times it by 200, and he gains that much. But in most generic rank, if you throw him in anything that's rank 8 that's not Galax not using Galaxy Eyes, Photon Dragon, you know, he's at least going to do, if you hit a direct attack, it's doing half of 4,000, half of, you know, you're doing 2,800, and that's all you're getting. There's better rank 8s who are 
have 2800 attack that you know can put those materials to better use but anyways I still like him uh, you know you can go uh, galaxy has full armor into him another reason why I put him so high on the list is because you can put dark matter on him and I'll, I think the best decks for rank 8's to go into are dragons any dragon deck that go rank 8's is awesome because you can utilize dark matter if you can u utilize dark matter and you throw the galaxy monsters in there that gives you so much advantage as a dragon deck and you know you disable your opponent anyways for number five it looks like yeah is number 107 galaxy has tachyon dragon uh, the reason why i put him higher um than prime photon dragon for two reasons he does not require galaxy has photon dragon that's the main reason and also he uh, i love using this card in sylvans because I would put rank up magic the seventh one in there, and you can easily just stack that on your top of your deck. So next time, your next turn, you can draw it, and you get him, and you get Neo Galaxy Eyes, uh, Tachyon Dragon, which is like, what are you gonna do about that? It's like, it's a very powerful card. But also he gets like, beginning of the battle phase, you can negate all the effects of face up cards on the field. Oh, it gets face up monsters, and then if their attacks and defense are off, you switch them back to their normal. And he gains a thousand attack points for each effect he negates that turn, and then um, and then he gets to make a second attack in the row. Uh, one time I've gotten him up to six thousand points in a battle phase and attack twice. But yeah, I, he's that's why I prefer him over uh, Prime Photon for this part to be higher on the list. But I still think there are better cards on the list. Number four, Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis. This is an amazing card. It's, I think it's the, it is the second rank eight that was introduced into the game. The first being Thunder and Dragon, but that's not generic, so it's not on the list. Plus, I think all these cards are better than Thunder and Dragon. But uh, basically, you tribute, you know, you detach, you tribute any number of monsters from your hand and or your side of the field, and then you destroy an equal number of cards. That's amazing. You can just. Uh, you blow up basically the entire field and he does not target he's amazing in the format he does he gets over dark he gets over cosmos he gets over i keep calling cosmos dark destroyers because dark destroyer is a sexy card but anyways it can go into rank eights that's why i like it um but anyways you know he gets over cosmos he gets over magic specters he gets over all this big crap um but yeah he's an amazing card uh, plus 3,000 beater. So, and if if you're playing him in dragons, and if Super Rejuvenation's back, and you tribute like a crap ton of dragons with it, and you activate Super Rejuvenation, you get a plus off of that. People forget, Super Rejuve also goes for tributed dragons. Okay, number three. <coughs> oh, sorry, my voice is getting a little froggy. Number 23, Lancelot. Lancelot, Dark Knight of the Underworld. Honestly, he is my second favorite rank 8. Um, I love the artwork on him. Uh, the, he's actually probably the weakest in attack for all of them. Uh, besides, you know, number 10 with... Actually, no, Giant Grinder's lower too. My bad. But the only thing that we can make him better is if they, his attack points with race. He, uh, dark, rank 8, uh, 2,000 attack, 1,500 defense. But he can attack your opponent directly while he has XC materials. I mean, it flicks battle damage. You can target one of your face up, your one face up card your opponent controls and destroy it. You know, you can get spells, traps, monsters. I mean, it targets, so the monsters probably won't be the best idea. But, but also, when any player's card, uh, spell, trap, or monster effects activated, uh, this is a mandatory effect where he has to detach and negate the activation. Um, so it's he's easy to bait crap out, but he's basically a rank eight cyber dragon infinity that has to do it, has to negate the first thing that pops up. I mean, if you get to pick and choose what you want to negate, that's awesome. But that the only problems with him is, you know, it's mandatory effect and low stats. If he was higher, then he'd probably be. I'd probably put him at number two. But anyways, on to number two. Number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon, 
from Harbinger da Dragon Titanic Galaxy. <coughs> Try saying that five times fast. Uh, well, I was debating whether he should be number one or two, but he just came out into the meta. He, I mean, he's put in some work in Japan. People have taken the other main rank eight out of their decks for him, but that's because it's such a spell card format. If it wasn't, he has... That's the thing. He's only good when it's a format dealing with spell cards. You know, he, he, but he's also, you know, he he's a great defender. You know, he negates your opponent's spells once per turn, or he can negate your own too. But I don't know why would you do that. Um, and then he adds the spell as material. And then, uh, if one of your opponent, well, if one of your opponents, if your opponent's monster attacks one of your cards, you can detach and switch the material. Uh, the target to him, and then if your opponent, uh, if a face of Exodus is monster you control, destroy it, but by battle or card effect, you can also target one face of Exodus um, monster you control, the target gains that attack points. But what I think would be cool is, you know, have him and another rank 8 on the field, and you know, rank 8s usually have high attack, I mean, or have like a dark matter on the field, the dark matter is destroyed. You know, target himself. He's at seven thousand attack. So, but that effect most people don't use too much, from what I've seen. But he's still an amazing card. But you guys are gonna think I'm very biased for when you guys see number one. But oh, look at that! You guessed it, Divine Dragonite Felgrand, my absolute favorite card. Um, now you guys are probably thinking I put him at number one because he's my favorite. But that's not. I mean, the little biasness happened, but he's been with us since end of 2013. Every deck that can summon rank eights, he's been in it. He's he can't negate, you know, spells or traps, but a monster effects going off negated. He's a forbidden lance. He's a forbidden chalice. He's a forbidden dress. I mean, I guess not really with a forbidden dress. I mean. <coughs> If a card effect's going to destroy him, he can protect himself or whatever he wants. Um, Mythic Dragon Rulers, which is the deck I love, play played double of him. Um, honestly, I mean, look at that. I have him and also in secret. I probably should have showed the secret so you can see his picture more, but I have him in freaking ghost, so I'm showing you in ghost. <laughs> but, I mean, he is. You know, high attack. Um, he's light, so he honest works with him. Uh, he can protect himself. You know, he's a great defender with his, and uh, you know, you can use his effect to detach, protect himself, or one of your monsters, or you can use his effect to, you know, negate one of your opponent's monsters' effects. Um, if you go first turn him, and then your opponent goes um, Skull Crobat Joker, negate that shit, and then boom, it's he's done for. Like, oh my goodness, he, or I can't. he's not done for. He probably still has more plays to go, but he, that's one less search for him. Or unless he needed that search and you totally screwed him over. <coughs> but anyways, he's been, he put, he, he's put so much work, I think he deserves a spot to be number one. But anyways, that is my top eight. Uh, so... I would like to, or top eight, top ten, and I would like to know what you guys think about this list. Oh, I'm sorry if none of your favorite cards were any spot on the list, but let me know what you think of this list. What would spots would you pick the card? What do you think is the most powerful rank eight? I know these three are probably the most debatable, probably these two, but anyways, let me know what you like, and 